Jeremy S. Cook here, and today I'm going over a new revision of my rotary shortcut keyboard. The device can fast forward and rewind songs, play and pause, and turn the volume up and down. But now the device can even indicate caps lock, num lock, and scroll lock. It can even keep your computer on, which I'll go over a little bit later. A previous version did much the same thing, it could even play a game called Slither.io. It also had NeoPixels, which didn't really do anything, but did look pretty cool. This new revision transforms these NeoPixels from something that looks cool to something that's actually useful, in that it shows you what kind of caps lock keys are on. You can see here the caps lock key, it comes on, you can see a small little LED poking out through the keyboard. And you know, same thing with the scroll lock, which you never use, or the num lock, which I prefer to have on at all times. You know, you really can't see that when you're, when you're typing, so it's roughly useless. My idea was that in, in addition to firing up the LEDs, it would hijack the signal and power a little speaker that would just beep annoyingly if the caps lock on or whatever was on. Uh, I got this idea from a guy named Glenn Akins, who makes some really cool projects. I'd definitely suggest you check out his channel. But, you know, upon a uh, little bit back and forth with him, he mentioned that I could probably use the HID functionality to just pass that signal to this, uh, this shortcut key. In reality, I had everything I needed right there to reprogram it. You can see here the blue indicates the caps lock on. Now I turn it off, that turns off. Green indicates scroll lock. Again, a bit useless. And then the num lock key, if it's not on, it blinks blinks red. Basically, I want that num lock key to be on all the time so I can use uh, use that num numeric keyboard in Excel or, or whatever else. If it's not on, it's, it's quite annoying. It just shines brightly enough that I can I can see it really well in the background. It's, it saved me some time typing and stuff. Another thing I thought I should modify is that the bottom slides around quite a bit, so might as well change the mechanicals around a little bit while I'm at it. Here's the original or the second revision of this. You can see the uh, the front. It's it's torn out with a Dremel tool because I didn't quite make it correctly. So in this revision, I'm gonna correct some of my mistakes that I made before and add some new functionality. Also, I'd like to show off that, that metal knob that I put on there rather than the 3D printed knob. I had that on there for a while, but I thought I'd just show it off in this video. There, I'm taking that off. And one nice thing that I did think about when I was making the old revision was to put some holes in the bottom. This made it really easy to, to remove the circuit board so that if I ever needed to make some sort of upgrade, I could do it. So I modified the inside just a little bit, made it a little bit, a little bit shorter, so it would fit in better, not bow out. And then I put some holes in the bottom to house the little, little plastic knobs that I would put on there to keep it from sliding around. I used some support material on the bottom, which was kind of, kind of a pain because I had to scrape it off just a little bit, little by little, in order to get everything even. There's outside and then the inside, and then you can see my 3D printer doing its job there. I keep the top open now so that I have a little bit better view of the time-lapse videos that you just saw. So there I am applying the nubs. Bought a, bought a bunch of these from China quite a while ago. They're really nice to have on hand, so I'd recommend spending a dollar or so on that when you get a chance just to have it. Spray plenty of the outside with plastic dip. This made a nice matte covering. Could have used two coats if I was feeling more ambitious, but just did take the shine off everything and yeah, looks pretty pretty good with one coat at least. After that, the circuit board went in, back in, same exact same setup as before. At some point, I guess I could put it on a PCB instead of perf board, but I guess that's a job for later, for later if I ever get to it. Beyond these, you know, twelve projects or so that are always poking around in my head. It's a nice tight press fit on that, just, just enough so that it wouldn't come out. Same thing with the, you know, quote unquote clear PLA that I used on the top, top surface. Push that down and then replaced, replace the knob on the top. You see the front, it, it'll accommodate the USB port without any sort of modification as before. Looking good there. And, and I'll put the I'll put the STL files online for this if you want to try to make your own. Looking good. And after that, to my computer and let's check out the programming.
so here's the Arduino code. The, the board basically acts like an Arduino Leonardo, and it's a little Pico board, R really awesome thing. HID project library, that's a really important. And then these numbers here are for the X and Y movements on the game that I had in before. I've also got a function here that jiggles the scroll lock key once in a while. I'll go over that a little bit later. And then down here, you've got some logic that dictates if if the caps lock key is on, then you do one thing, light everything up blue. If the scroll lock key is on, light everything up green. And then if the num lock key is not on, then you pulse the, the uh, red LEDs. All through this whole thing, you've, you've still got some indicator to tell if you're rotating the, the knob back and forth to show if it's going, volume's going up or down. But that's shown on screen pretty well, and you should obviously be able to hear it. I'll put this code on GitHub along with the STLs if you want to take a look at that further. Another thing I put in here is that if you press both buttons at the same time, it'll go into a mode where it presses the scroll lock key on and off, just, just on off real fast so that it just kind of jiggles the computer, makes sure it doesn't go to sleep. I was having some problems with my computer shutting down or not shutting down, but going to sleep at inopportune times, even though I had the settings set up, I thought, so it wouldn't do that. So. Anyway, if you want to make sure your computer stays on, then there is some code here for doing that. Or if you need to make sure your computer, whatever, some, some key is pressed once in a while, then this code will do that for you too. So could could be useful for a lot of different things. Here's another view of me playing with the lights, playing with the volume up and down. Really love how it sounds, love how it looks. And of course, I love when the blue light lights up. You can see the, the cursor kind of going around too. It kind of makes it maybe it makes you look forward to when I need to use the caps lock. And there's a scroll lock. Don't get to use that at all, really. But like it looks pretty cool too. Same thing with the red light, which I never use because I like to have the numbs lock num lock on. I hope you've enjoyed this project. It's been certainly one of my most useful hacks that I've made. If you want to build your own, I check out the second part that I'll, I'll link in the editing screen. And you know, even the first, if you want, it's not quite as Things have definitely evolved quite a bit since then. But yeah, it's a really cool hack. I hope you hope you enjoy it. Um, if you liked it, be sure to poke around on my channel. I got robots, woodworking projects, whatever. So thanks so much for watching. This is Jeremy S. Cook, signing off.